The new NetGate 8300 has four 10 gig SFP Plus ports, three two and a half gig ports, four one gig SFP ports, and all 11 of these ports are fully independent and can be each configured to any combination of LAN or WAN setup that you need. This unit has one PCI 3.0 by eight and a PCI 4.0 by 16 for more expandability. The base model has 16 gig of ECC DDR4 that is upgradable to 32. By default, they're gonna come with a single power supply and NetGate does offer a dual hot swap option. All this is running on an 8-core Intel D1733NT processor. The 8300 in this review is a demo unit provided by NetGate. All opinions are my own, and this video is in no way sponsored by NetGate, so let's get started. Are you an individual or forward-thinking business seeking expert assistance with network engineering, storage, or virtualization projects? Maybe you're part of an internal IT team that needs to proactively manage, monitor, and secure your technology. We offer comprehensive consulting services tailored to meet your specific requirements. Whether you need fully managed or co-managed IT services, our team is ready to help you. We specialize in supporting businesses that require IT administration or teams seeking an extra layer of support to enhance our operations. Our install team is ready to assist you with all of your structured cabling and Wi-Fi planning needs as well. To learn more about any of our services, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out the Hire Us form, and let us start crafting the perfect IT solution for you. If you want to show some extra love for our channel, Check out our swag store with shirts, hats, dust accessories, and more. We also have affiliate links down below that'll get you discounts and deals on products and services we talk about on this channel. With the ad read out of the way, let's get you back to the content that you came here for. Now I wanna start here at the NetGate 8300 blog post, which it's released in June of 2024. This is August of 2024, so I've only had a couple weeks of testing with it, not a long-term review. Let's jump right down here to some of the highlights. We have an eight core two gigahertz Intel Xeon processor, specifically as it was noted up here, this is the D1733NT processor. They have 11 independent ports. This is not one like some of the previous older models that had the split VLANs or anything like that, 11 discrete ports. We have four of them that are SFP plus, caged ports, then we have four standard SFP one gig ports, and then we have three two and a half gig. And if you're wondering what the extra port for, well, that's your lights out BMC management. So you still have one more port over there just dedicated for that. I like that it's dedicated and not a shared port. For expandability, we have the PCI 3.0X half height for low profile cards and a PCI 4.0X16 for full height three quarter length cards. Storage is provided by a 512 gig MVME. We have 16 gigs of DDR4 ECC memory, expandable to 32 gig. Cooling is active internal fans, and there's plenty of fans and plenty of cooling in this. We have dual hot swap power supply bays. The unit as shipped to me has one 500 watt PSU hot swappable and does have the option for having a second power supply. Now let's talk about where this fits in the PFSense lineup. This is not a replacement for the 8200. This is a higher end model that's targeted at replacing the, well, somewhat aged and dated 1541. And not only replace it, of course, replace it with something much faster. And we're looking, if you're running PFSense Plus, a 47% faster firewall speeds, routing VPN 100% faster. And if you're running the Tensor software instead of PFSense Plus, you're looking at a 222% increase in speed for VPN and forwarding of 500% increase. Uh, this video you also find linked down below from NetGate. Now I don't have any specific measuring tools to figure out the CFM of the fans, but I did laugh when it knocked over my little sound meter when I first turned it on. At its peak, I seen about 87 dBA when the system first starts up and puts the fans under their full duty cycle, like a lot of enterprise equipment does. Then it comes down to about 44 dBA at idle and pretty much stayed there. I didn't have anything I had in this that was able to, even under load over time, really make those fans rev up too much louder than that. It's got about 96 watts of usage when I first turned it on, about 50 watts when it's booting up, and then idles generally below 50 watts, but then can exceed 50 watts up to about 60 when I put it under load routing 10 gig workloads. I don't know if this will increase substantially, but it would obviously increase a bit if you had 25 gig cards in there and a little bit more possibly if you have 100 gig and a lot of routing going on. Worth noting as well, this is all done with a single power supply because that's the device I have. Now, as noted, when I was showing the ports, there's a dedicated port for the BMC or baseband management controller or lights out management. This allows you to log in and see system information, health, this dashboard, so you can see if there's any issues with the system. You can go through the diagnostics, see postcodes, factory reset it, or even go here to syslog, enable syslog and be able to send the syslog settings 
to a dedicated server for collection and monitoring of notices. There's actually a lot of configuration you can do in here for setting up alert policies, emails, etc. So I think this is a really nice system to have to be able to go through and monitor the system, especially when you have to have this remotely when you're managing this for clients or if you have this in a data center. It does include also the virtual media manager. So if you have remote media and you need to reload it that way, you're able to do so. Now, one other thing to note is remote control isn't like a normal KVM. This is serial over LAN, which means it's essentially connecting the serial port over the LAN, just like you can connect in directly, which if you're not familiar with connecting serial ports, you may notice the blinking cursor when you press enter it refreshes the screen and then redraws things and you now have access to the shell and it works very fast it's actually quite responsive here now as i noted earlier this will ship with either pf sense plus or tensor depending on how you order it i am not reviewing tensor day out of scope of this particular video it was shipped with pf sense plus and that's where the review is going to be about now running pf sense plus pretty simple on this it's going to come with that with the license for pf sense plus there's no fees or recurring fees you need to pay for that it is unlimited with the netgate hardware the interfaces are labeled p9 lan and p10 wan by default and then p0 through p8 to represent all the interfaces and this matches the writing on the front so it's no question when you're setting this up which ones are which and as noted each of these are completely discrete ports and completely configurable so i've actually reset up and p0 is now my lan and p1 is actually the wan that i'm using for this this allows me to use 10 gig on both sides so i can run 10 gig through it for some of the testing speaking of testing i tested quite a few different DAC and fiber cables with this they all worked great the ones i had tested were the fs.com both DAC and fiber a mikrotik sfp plus to rg45 a ipolex DAC. i think i found that on amazon somewhere for cheap and i tried a variety of 10g tech all these plugged in none of them had any issues they all linked up perfectly fine one thing I want to note about my testing is the 10 gig performance. If you go under system advanced miscellaneous and we scroll down, we have the power savings under Intel speed shift. I currently have it set to performance. Now you don't have to reboot at all to change this setting. You can slide this slider whichever way you want, performance or energy efficient. So let's drag this window over here. I've got it set up to route through the PFSense 8300. So this is going through it and we're able to achieve full 10 gigabit speeds. No problem with my TrueNAS connecting to my system here. But what I want to do now, and we can see that we have good performance here. So 8.8 .8 gigs a second. Let's go ahead and uh, change it to fully energy efficient. We're going to hit save. We don't have to reboot as I noted. It applies the settings. We're going to rerun the test again. And you'll notice that it's getting a little bit less. We're sitting around 6.6, 7. A little bit less speed and there's some stepping down that's happening to keep the process under so we did about 6.68 if you vary this in between you'll get some varied results in between but if we simply slide it back over here scroll down and click save again run the test again you're going to get right back up to those full speeds on this. So that is something to keep in mind that if you want to restrict it, the wattage difference was roughly 10 watt savings, but of course you're going to run into some performance differences and you won't get quite that full speed across here if you're doing that. Just something I thought was interesting that you might find interesting as well. Now, a question you might be asking is, but Tom, you didn't show it running Sericata on interface, or was it running Sericata? Actually, the first test it wasn't, and I did another test with Sericata running, and yes, it's still able to achieve 10 gig. So I went ahead and added Sericata to both the WAN and LAN interfaces that it's passing through with 10 gig, and well, it still is able to pass 10 gig, so no problems there, using iPer split with four streams. The overall hardware feels really solid, good fit and finish. I don't see any issues at all with this device. I only had it for a couple of weeks, so obviously my long-term review will be coming later. I should probably follow up on the 6100s and 8300s because we've got a lot of those deployed for our clients and as consulting gigs that we've set up for clients and have no issues on those. It's been very, very reliable devices. I haven't had any problems, which is, of course, why we now have some quotes out for some 8300s because, as I noted, the 1541s were their previous fast ones which are a little long in a tooth those are older models so this is the new replacement for that i did not mention price and that's because they have the price available at netgate site and the price may not be the same when you are watching this video than when you're going to buy it so the price is public 
go get it from there. This is just a review of whether or not you like the product or give you some information to help you make that determination. I'm just a data point, not a decision point. Ultimately, it's up to you. Nonetheless, love hearing from you. Leave your thoughts and comments down below what you like, what you hate what you think about this product. I'm always curious. If you want to get more in-depth, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where you can have a more engaging discussion on this topic. Like and subscribe to see more content from the channel. And uh, see you over in the forums or online or wherever you can find me. Thanks.